Hello and welcome to part two of our, our journey through the CA continuous testing story. Now with the modern software factory, uh, it's all about getting your ideas and concepts through your release pipeline to a product that delivers value to your customers. And using the CA toolset, we have the tools that can help you deliver that. So we have the tools that can take you from the requirements to the modeling, to the actual pipeline, all the way through to delivering that requirement into production. Now in the first video, we talked very much about project portfolio management, Agile Central and Agile Requirement Designer, which is all around the requirements. And today we're gonna to move on to that and talk about the developer. So we're gonna actually focus on this area here, which is how can the CA tool set help a developer in his day-to-day -day life? And we're gonna do that by going to a demonstration. So let me just minimize this. So we're going to start in Eclipse. So we're in Eclipse, and what we've got here is uh, a very simple example of a, a web page. And on the right-hand side, I'll just refresh this screen, um, you can see here, this is our plugin to Agile Central. So these are the user stories assigned to the, the user I'm logged in as. And if I drill into that user story, you'll see these are the tasks. So you can see that the what we're going to work on is this lightweight web UI. And for us to achieve this, we need four things. We need uh, an API to get data from an existing database. We need to work with an existing API. Uh, we're going to need to then do a performance test and we need to make some changes to the UI itself. So we're going to start with the first one, which is the um, generate API of existing data. So we've gone to our CA Live API creator. So it's just a web page we've got here and we're going to create a new API. Now we can get data from various sources, you can see here, but we're going to use, uh, in our example, the data in an Oracle database. So we click on Oracle. And then we put in here the details. So how do we connect to this database? So we put in the IP address, the SID, the schema, and the login credentials. And we click test. Um, that's confirmed that we've got a connection to our database server. And we click continue and what we're now doing is we're building out that api and that's now done so the api is built and if i click on this proceed to rest lab what you'll see is um, we have an api for each of the tables in the database so there's one table called drugs there's one called patients so if i click on patients that's the the rest api and if i click on a get um, that's the data coming back from our database so we go through the api to get to this oracle database server we can also go to physicians and do the same thing. So we've now got these APIs that we can leverage in our application to get data out of this Oracle database. Now the second task was to actually um, work with an existing API. So if we go to CASV Community Edition, we can actually capture an API and then virtualize it. So this is the API we're gonna work with. So if I take that API there, and we just put it to a browser, like so. Uh, we're going off to the, the FDA website to actually get this data back. And if we change the drug on the end, um, you can see here we get this back from the live site. We, we're going to capture this and then virtualize it. So we go back to SV. Uh, there's the, the URL, and we do a get. We do a send. And at the bottom of the screen, you'll see there's the response that came back. And we can save that. And we just save that into this bucket over here. And we do a few of these. Let's do a, another drug. We'll do Advil, do the same thing. And we'll save that. So we've now saved these two um, responses. We can carry on doing this and gathering all this data. But what we want to do is take this and then bundle it up into a virtual service. So we're going to go to our, our virtual service creation. And what we can do is we're going to say we could have imported a, a swagger file there's various rr pairs we can do a recording there's various ways you can actually do this we're going to use this one we just collected by going to the bundle editor and we just say import these in and you see there we've just done it so we've just taken those two request response pairs we've added them to our bundle and we can now say let's create a virtual service that's the virtual service grade you can see it's here we can then give it a name so we can say it's the FDA API virtual service, like so. And what we can also do is then we can start it. So at the moment, it's going to run on the developer's machine. It's going to run on the local machine. If I change this port number to 10999, we can then say run this virtual service. 
So now on my machine, I have this live service. I can copy that URL. I can go to my browser. And where we were there talking to a live service, we can now talk to the virtual service. Let me just change that there. So this is going to be local host. So as you can see, we're now communicating with that virtual service. And if I go back to the SV product, you'll see we've had a, a we get a response there. So um, I can now work with this this virtual API. And if the online service is offline, I can work in. We can also push this <coughs> virtual service to the SV service and share it with my colleagues. So I've now captured this virtual service and we can then combine this into our application. So what we've done in, in Eclipse is we actually make calls to these virtual services as part of our, our application. So if I go to the application itself, um, here's our application. And if I log in here, what we're doing is we have two simple drop downs. You log in with the right name. There you go. So this drop down is going to make a call to that virtual service, the um, the API we created, and this is returning the the patients from our database. So we've gone and got the drop down of those patients, and this is the data from that database. This drop down is going to that drug data table as well, and when I click on live, we're going off to the live FDA website. If I change this switch to virtual, we've redirected this to a virtual service. And as you can see, there's no difference to the actual response. So I can then carry on working with the virtual service um, or the live. So we now have the capability to carry on working even if the, the live API service is not available. Now, the other thing we need to do was a, a stress test. And in the first video, we actually generated what's called a Taurus script, which is used for our BlazeMeter product. And we're going to just run this. So as a developer, I can now run that, that script that was generated by the, the ARD model. We can now bring up this uh, Blaze Meter to run the test on my developer's machine. Now, we could also use a switch to run the load in the cloud. So if we were if our website was externally facing, we could choose to generate load from the, the, cloud, the Blaze Meter platform. Uh, in this case, we're running this stress test on my local machine. So I can, this is really shift left. As a developer, I can run a load test. I can simulate users, um, generate load against machine. I can look at response times and failure rates you can see here and run a really quick test against my environment to make sure that um, everything's working from a performance perspective. Uh, this test takes a few minutes. And as soon as it's finished, we get the results back and we're done. So we just run that performance test. And if you go back to Eclipse, if you remember that was that was our first three tasks. It was to uh, we've generated an API with that patient data, uh, we've actually virtualized a, a virtual service with a, an existing API, and we've now just run a performance test. Now also in Eclipse, we actually have integration with Veracode, so we're going to make a code change soon. But in the plugin here, you can see down the bottom here, we have what's called Veracode Greenlight, which is scanning my Java code, and in real time warning me of any security issues. And if here you can see there's one, and I can click on the details. And you then drill into, it will give me the details as to what, what issue has been found so I can correct it. I can also download results from Veracode. So in the next video, we're going to show you uh, Jenkins actually publishing um, or pushing a build to Veracode to be scanned. I can come in here and say, I need to download, so build 190 I ran last week. I want to download the results from build 190 to see what was found in Veracode. These are the flaws that were found in Veracode, and I can click on these, and then also go into the details. So again, this is very much no shift left, DevSecOps, letting the developer get access to this information to resolve these issues quickly, security issues quickly. But the last thing I'm gonna do is actually make a change to the code. So you can see here we've got, um, on the, the home screen, we've got a, a graphic, this graphic. We're gonna change that graphic. So all we're going to do is basically change this comment. So we're going to delete that comment like so and put it there. And then on the end, we're going to take this comment, remove that and put it on the end there. So very simple change. Um, if I do a, do a save and make that change that save locally, uh, if we go back to our web page, so this is looking at my local copy. If I refresh this screen, you'll see we've just changed that graphic 
what we're going to do is we're going to commit that change to our, our source and to, to Git. And in the next video, we'll show you how we can pick that change up and using our release pipeline tool, we'll deploy it. So we're going to go to our Git screen and we see that's the code we just changed. And we're going to make a change. We're going to say we've had a, a graphics change to home page. Now, as well as putting in the description, we're going to actually put in the task number. So if you remember when we were looking at the tasks assigned to my user, um, TA4 was the task that was for this change. We're going to make this commit. And we're going to push it to our Git server, like so. Now, what's also happened is uh, our Git server has actually passed that change and attached it to the task in Agile Central. So as well as the Agile Central screen, we also have FlowDoc here. So FlowDoc is our, our messaging tool. So you'll see here we have messages coming from our other development teams and also from our build tool. But you'll see there, we've actually got um, a message to say that that commit we just made has been committed against this user story and this, this task, TA4, has had a, a change set created, which is what we just did. And also the test we created earlier in the previous video. So if we go back to Agile Central and log back in, what we'll see is uh, that task four. So let me go to task four. There's the task. If we go to the, the change set screen, what we'll see is there's a, a there's the change we just created. So that's the, um, the change made by the developer has been linked back to this task. And this link will automatically take me to get so we can see that change in our Git repository. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Um, the third video will show you the, the release pipeline. So taking that code change we just generated and then pushing it through our release pipeline, leveraging all the tools you see on the screen. So our SV capabilities, test data management, application test, blaze meter, and also using Atomic and our CDD product. Thank you for your time.